And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be poured. When you come back, you can become a prophet. Give the Lord a big hand and take your seat. Glory to God. This is an apostolic conference. There are three major kinds of conferences that are put together for the purpose of kingdom advancement. We have evangelical conferences and the body of an evangelical conference is for soul winning and harvest. Every time God converges his people and the body of the spirit is evangelical in nature, the Lord goes out in his power to reach out to the needs of the people and to manifest his excellency and his ecstasy through the manifestation of his power and by so doing turn the hearts of men to himself and the result is a great harvest there is also a prophetic conference in a prophetic conference the body of the spirit is to communicate the present mind of the Holy Ghost the voice of God is made clear and the will of God is communicated to a people and to a territory by the instrumentality of the prophetic anointing so that a people can have accuracy as touching the pathways for navigation in order to be consistent with what God is doing part time without prophetic direction the church will be lost and so every time God gathers his people and the body of the spirit is prophetic in nature the voice of God is heard clearly and the emphasis is to bring direction and administration to the purposes of God. When you come into an apostolic conference, the body of the Spirit is to bring people to maturity in the things of the Spirit so that they become part of God's envoy for administering His agenda. And so at apostolic conferences major on doctrinal matters, it majors on discipleship and empowerment so that men can come into stature to be able to bring governance to the things of the spirit these three dimensions of of divine operations and conferences are always necessary especially when god wants to do a holistic work in a territory glory to god when evangelical conferences are put together People are brought into the consciousness of the power of God and salvation is engendered. Personal convictions as touching salvation becomes a reality to people. When prophetic conferences are put together, people are able to discern the mind of God and to have direction for what God is doing in the season. And when apostolic conferences are put together, people are built up so that they can establish God's government within the territory. There is an empowerment that is released to make that a possibility. And so when you come into an evangelical conference, you expect great harvest because the effect and the impact of that conference is seen in the conference. But when you come into a prophetic conference and an apostolic conference, the impact is seen after the conference. People receive direction and they know what to do and people are empowered to begin to advance kingdom. And so what God will be doing in the course of these three days is to empower men who will be able to carry his kingdom to their respective spheres so that the kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Now, the beauty of apostolic conferences is that a measure of the evangelical and the prophetic is also captured within apostolic conferences. So souls can be won and the power of God is on display to heal the sick. Prophetic direction is given but over and above that, men are built up and they are able to establish God's kingdom. Now, some of you will leave this meeting. You will discover that you will have clear-cut direction on beginning to establish God's mandate, either in your family or in your territory. This is why when apostolic meetings are put together, churches are built. It's about government. It's about establishing God's system within territories. 
When apostolic conferences are put together, demonic installations are put down and new emphasis are installed into the territory because it's more about government and governance. It's more about maturity and also administration to the things of the spirit. And so the things we'll be sharing in the course of this meeting, amongst other things, will be to stir up an awakening in your spirit and also to empower you to become a kingdom envoy. And you will see the impact of this meeting. For some of you, it will last with you for a lifetime. I say it will last with you for a lifetime. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so the theme of this conference is titled Born of God. Born of God. A generation that is cooked in the womb of the spirit is about to emerge. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. You know the standards of God are our generation is trying to water it down. Because they think the ways of God are the ways of men. And so men can no longer me measure up to that which the fathers walked in. Men can no longer reveal the clear counsel of God and establish God's dominion by his power. Because we are lowering or attempting to lower the standards of God. In this conference, the standard of God will not just be made bare but the capacity to rise up and to walk from that realm will be imparted. Glory to Jesus. Because of the sensitive nature of what we want to do, tonight will be a bit calm because I want to take out time to navigate through scripture to show you the entire coordinate of the areas that we'll be touching and dealing with in the course of this meeting. We are going to have two morning sessions tomorrow and Saturday and the morning sessions will be principally given to teachings. Teachings for the making of men. And then the evening sessions from tomorrow and Saturday will be more of encounter services where the power of God will be put on display. Glory to Jesus. But for tonight, we'll begin by navigating to show us the borderlines of the truth that we want to share in the course of this meeting. Can we salute Apostle Eddie Mogisha? That's my brother. He's the one laboring to put everything together, coordinating. It's a huge body. Last year, I supported extensively, but this year I said, no, you handle it yourself. You people have learned some things, so do it. And God has helped them tremendously. Glory to God. Give him a big hand. Give the entire team a big hand. Volunteers from everywhere, thank you so much for laboring. It will be from glory to glory. In Jesus' precious name. And so we'll, we'll look at a few things tonight. You can take time to write. I'll be slow enough for you to write. But from tomorrow evening, we'll be, we'll be volatile. <laughs> you won't be able to write much, but you will catch you will catch because there are things that can be communicated cognitively others are imparted so anyone your pen can capture let your spirit catch it <laughs> glory to Jesus so we'll be preaching the gospel basically and it's important for you to understand that there are three major dimensions to the gospel the first is an attempt to make God known so every time the gospel is preached, God is revealed. The essence and the person of God and the works of God. Mostly through his son, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the clearest definition of God. When God wanted to make himself truly, truly known and relatable, he came in a bodily form. And so Christ revealed and the works of Christ revealed and demonstrated is one of the major aspects of the gospel. Glory to God. And that's why Paul summarized it in 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 3 to verse 4. He showed us three articles 
that captures and reveals not just the person of Christ, but the works of Christ. Concerning the gospel, he said, For I deliver unto you first that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. The next verse, he said, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to scriptures. So Paul was trying to give us understanding of the person of God and his works, and he went straight into Jesus. Now, if you read verse 1 and 2 of that scripture, he emphasized the fact that it's upon this premise that we stand. That means outside of the revelation of God and the works of God through Christ, you don't have a standing in the spirit. Glory to God. In fact, when he summarized this truth further, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, he said, we preach Christ and him crucified. We preach Christ and him crucified. He said to the Greek is foolishness, to the Jews is a stumbling block. He said, but to us who are being saved, whether Greek or Jew, Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. So the first and major aspect of the gospel is the revelation of God and the works of God. It is in that revelation that you can infer the person and the character of God so that you can have an intimate relationship with him and worship him correctly. Because if you don't know God and if you don't know what he has done, it will be impossible to have a relationship with him. And it will be impossible to worship him. Because worship is not a song. We can worship through song, but worship is more about an intimate interaction with God where adoration flows out of your spirit and it results in obedience to his commandments. So if you don't have an intimate walk with God and adoration does not flow from your spirit, which results in your submission to his dictates, even if you sing and cry, you are not worshipping. That's why the first time the word worship was used in Genesis 22 verse 5, Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac. There was no singing there. If there was anything you see there is pain of losing a dear one. Notwithstanding, Abraham was able to take that action because he has known the one he was dealing with. If you study Hebrews 11 from verse 17, the Bible said Abraham accounted that God was able to raise back Isaac in a figure. So he knew something about God's love, God's mercies, and God's powers. He knew God was too loving to ask him to give up the only son that he trusted him for for 25 years. And he knew that even if God allowed him to let go of Isaac, he had the power to raise him back from the dead. So the obedience and the relationship was informed from knowledge of who God is. And so when we preach the gospel to people, it is the gospel that opens the door for relationship, for worship, which is adoration and obedience. Glory to God. The first part of the gospel is the revelation of God and his works. The second part of the gospel is to reveal ourselves to ourselves. Because you don't know who you are until you see yourself from God's perspective. And so every time the gospel is preached, every time Christ is preached, he will discover who you are. Because you are actually designed to reflect God. It is the four that made you to mirror other spirits and other dimensions. And it will be impossible for you to find yourself except as you find God. And so within the context of the gospel is the making of the man of God. The man of God is not a preacher. The man of God is not a prophet. The man of God is not an apostle. The man of God is an entity that is born of God. The man of God is an entity that comes from God. If you don't realize who you are from God's perspective, and if you are not metamorphosing into your likeness in God, you have not received the gospel. Because the idea of the gospel is not to give you a language. When you hear the gospel, you will have a language. But the idea of the gospel is to help you discover yourself so that you become the version that you are in God. And as I begin to show you God's plans, you will see that God's primary attempt is to create us to be like him. So if a man does not mirror God, he has not really existed. If a man does not mirror God, it means he has not received from God. See, what we receive from God are not cars. It's not money. All of those things are byproduct. What we actually receive from God are the things that make us to become like God. Because when we become like God, every other thing is a byproduct. So the second aspect of the gospel is the empowerment of the spirit that brings about transformation and transfiguration 
until every one of us becomes like Christ. That's why Paul was speaking. He said, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. When we meet you, we should see the dimension of God that you represent until you come to a point where your sojourn on the face of the earth has culminated into a metamorphosis that makes you re represent God. You have not heard the gospel. He said, we all with open faces, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, we are what? Changed. And we are not just changed into anything. We are changed into the image of the glory that we see. And that transformation is from glory to glory as by the spirit of the living God. So the second part of the gospel is to migrate Mike from a man of man to a man of God. The second part of the gospel is to migrate Mike from a fallen man to a glorified man. The second part of the gospel is to migrate man from a weak man of flesh to a strong man of the spirit. If you know the gospel and if you have heard the gospel, when men see you, they will see the dimensions of God on your inside. They, even if they don't know, even if they don't know you are a Christian, they don't know you are a religious man, they will just know that there's something about you that is divine because the dimensions of divinity will rub off on you. Number three, aspect of the gospel is empowerment to advance God's program. When a man receives the truth of the word of God, he's empowered to advance God's program. See, representing a spirit takes empowerment. You cannot advance the agenda of a spirit without empowerment. That's why Jesus told his disciples in Luke 24, 49, he said, don't go out with stories. People know that you were with me. You have gone to some locations with me, but it's not enough to tell people that you were with me. You need to go with something. And the summary of that thing you go with is power. He said, wait until you are endued with power from on high. Because you are about to advance an agenda. Every time you say, thy kingdom come, it's a declaration of war. Because there are other spirits who are attempting to facilitate their own agenda. And if you want to advance God's agenda, which is contrary to their own agenda, you are declaring war. And if you are not empowered, you become a casualty of war. And so, when we preach the gospel, it's an attempt to empower men to be able to advance the frontiers of God's kingdom and to facilitate God's agenda on the face of the earth. He said, not many days from now. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power and you shall be witnesses unto me. You shall receive the Holy Ghost and power and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in the uttermost part of the world. It takes empowerment to advance God's kingdom. I was sharing with the volunteers last night of the battles we fought just before coming here. You will know that spirits are not sleeping because every time you speak for God, you establish God's dominion. And everywhere you establish God's dominion, you stop the dominion of Satan. And so God keeps empowering us through the gospel to be able to advance his kingdom and to establish his dominion. So every message you'll be hearing in the course of this conference will either reveal God and the works of God or it will reveal you to you and create a system for you to be transformed into what God has called you or it will empower you to be able to advance God's kingdom. And so prepare your minds that as you leave this conference, you will know God at another level. Like Job said, I heard of you with the hearing of the ears. He said, but now I've seen you. John said that which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we looked upon, and our hands handled of the word of life. That's a man who has had encounters with the gospel. You will leave this conference knowing God at a level that no circumstance can make you change your mind. You will leave this kingdom, this, this conference, knowing God at a level where nobody can make a mockery of you. Because you will not just know about him, you will know him. And trust me, those who know God can put God on display. <laughs> when you know him, you can put him on display. It is in putting God on display that you shut down those who try to make a mess of what God is doing. And I prophesy to someone, those who can demonstrate God will rise from this meeting. You will leave this conference becoming an upgraded version of yourself. And you will leave this conference with empowerment to advance God's kingdom at a higher level.
in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's get into the message. What is the plan of God? Let me follow. Let me follow through. Sometimes energy is bottled in your spirit that if you are not careful, you will go through that route and you may not be able to instruct. It's an apostolic meeting. What is God's plan? Genesis 1, 26. Let's route scriptures to confirm the three things I've just shared here. He said, and God said, every time I read this scripture, I've read this scripture too many times. It, it, it humbles me at the majesty of God. It humbles me. You know, when I read this scripture, it looks to me like a studio of some sort where creation takes place. You know, one of the offices of God is, is as creator. Only God sits there. No matter how powerful, no matter how wise you are, at best you can be an inventor or a former. That means you need raw material to produce. The only one who doesn't depend on any raw material to produce anything is God. He's the only one who occupies that office. He can bring something out of nothing. It's one of the offices of God. God is also the only life giver. The only one who can give life is God. Only God. So when you see species replicating, the origin of that life that is introduced to create that species comes from only one being. He's called God. Only him sits there. So this scripture reveals many things to us. It doesn't just reveal God as creator. Imagine what was going on here. Earth was destroyed. God recreated the earth and he looked at the earth and he saw that some things were lacking. And he wanted to bring something from nothing into the earth. But for him to do that, he had to go into his office. Angels may peep. <laughs> there are certain curriculums that cannot be revealed. Because those are the things who make him who he is. So he withdrew to himself and God was deliberating. Imagine the mystery that surrounds this being. How can one person be, be deliberating? And then one person is talking, he says, let us. That means you are one, but you are we. <laughs> he said, let us make man. Let us create another entity. Because earth, there's a gap, there's a vacuum. Let's replace the vacuum so that we can bring balance to creation. Let us make man. But this time around, we are going to make him not after any other thing but ourselves. Because the first attempt of God trying to make himself known was through human vessel. The first attempt of God trying to make himself known was when he created man. Because you'll be shocked that the angels, why do you think they call him holy? Holy means you are in your own class. You are separated unto your own name. There is none like you. You will discover as you read the Bible that it's as man was created that different definitions of who God is started coming on the scene. You will never find all of those syllables in the angelic order. They just knew that this being is a superior being. They couldn't even look at him. When he shows up, they fall to the ground. The first time God wanted to be known, if you would say, study God, the first time God made himself available to be studied was when he created man. Because only here did he say, let us make a being that can reflect our total dimension. Now, if you study this scripture, you discover that the holistic essence of God was trapped in the creation of man. He didn't say, let us make man like the spirit. He didn't say, let us make man like the word. He didn't say, let us make man like the father. Let's aggregate the reality of father, son, and spirit together and form a creation that resembles them. Let us make man in our own image. So if you study God's plan, God's plan was for himself to be known and for himself to be manifested through human vessel. So anybody who calls himself a man, who does not reveal God, does not know the meaning of a man. Because the reason man was created was to host God and to reveal God. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And by revealing our image and likeness, he said that we have dominion. So dominion is a byproduct of the image and the likeness of God. If you are able to host God and manifest God, you will be a creature of dominion. Because that is who man is. If you study Psalm 8 verse 4, 
It looks as if there was a deliberation in the spirit realm. And the psalmist asked the question. He didn't say, who is man? He said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And when I teach this, I, I say it humorously. In the angelic order, it is high rank to stand in God's presence. When Gabriel showed up and was talking to Zechariah, a fallen man who was no longer a prince in Zion, he told him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. If you go to the heavens, not every angel is able to approach the presence. It's a secluded place. In fact, the higher your rank in the spirit, the closer you are to the presence. The closer you are to the throne room. Because it's a matter of rank for the angelic entities. But the angels were wondering, why we are struggling to come before you? Who is that being that you hid in the garden that you are living here to go to? So we, the angels are traveling to God's presence and God is traveling to meet man. The Bible said in Genesis 3, 8, in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking in the garden. So while angels are walking into God's presence, God is walking into man's presence. So that, that triggered a conversation in the spirit. So in Psalm 8, verse 4, wise men were deliberating. And so David asked the question, he said, what is man? that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou did visit him everybody's goal is to visit you why are you visiting man what is this being <laughs> you see we have not discovered who we are in god and that's why i told you one of the purpose of the gospel is to help you find yourself in god you think what they told you on your job is who you are your boss looks at you and says you are good for nothing and then you are crying not a man who knows who he is me cry because you say i'm good for nothing you don't know me if you know me you'll be honored to relate with me they look at you and they say you are fired and then some people go to commit suicide i've lost my job they fired me you can't fire some of us sir if you write a sack letter you have lost someone and if you think it's a joke watch in three months watch in six months i will become bigger than that company i'm trying to tell you who we are somebody looks at you and says i'm no longer interested in you this relationship is over and then you go into depression me go into depression how can i go into depression you just lost a gem you just lost a pair. You don't know who you are dealing with. It's the one God is mindful of. It's the one God visits that you just walked away from. I carry God's presence. Out of our belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Hold the mic, hold the mic, brother. Sit with the microphone. Marco Paragata Susa. Who wants to pray in the Holy Ghost? We are preparing the ground for the meeting. Oh my God. Lakori Paragata. Zegeziza Antori Varades. Pregedudara Tavila Paradasta. Oh. Out of my belly shall flow rivers. Rivers of living water. So out of my belly shall flow rivers. Rivers of living water. And as the river flows, it begins to bring out. It's a life-giving river Oh, let it flow right here Right now, right now, right now, right now And as the river flows It begins to bring everything to life It's a life-giving river Oh, let it flow right here See, as the river flows It begins to bring everything Bring every day to life. It's a life giving river. You know, many are not taught. Somebody.
somebody starts a business, he say, I'm hoping that this business will not fail. This business may not fail. Lord, let which business fail? The whole earth was given to one man. The whole earth. Now we are too many. The earth has become small to be managed. Who said the business? How can it fail? You are in charge of something it fails? My God, not with us. Not with us. We can change things. We can modify things. We can upgrade things just by touching it. Did you not read? It said, and whatsoever he do it. He shall prosper. Do you know why we seek God's face to do things? It's not because if God doesn't speak it, we fail. We're actually being careful because anything we do, we walk. And because of that, we stand the risk of not being in God's will. It's for the purpose of God's will that we seek God's face. If I go into politics, I will succeed. If I go into business, I will succeed. If I go into sport, I will succeed. If I do ministry, I will succeed. The reason I'm seeking God is not for to succeed. The power to succeed has already been invested. The reason I'm seeking God is because I want to be where God wants me to be. Rivers. Rivers of living water. Here, here, here. moment some generous will rise from this meeting I'm telling you some generous they told you oh you are a woman so you can't make it happen who, who, when we are talking about gender has no power there we are talking spirit and life they told you you are black so it won't work what we are talking about here skin color has no authority there we are talking realms of glory realms of glory realms these are realities that exist even before time was See, this is why we praise God. When we see what he has done for us, sometimes we break into tears. Sometimes we break into laughter. Sometimes we break into singing. Because it's too much for one lifetime. Too much for one lifetime. Look at what Jesus said. Let me show you scriptures that will humble you tonight. Sit down for a moment. John chapter 10 verse 34. I'm trying to show you, I want to teach on born of God. Jesus answered them. Now, Jesus called himself son of God and they said he was blaspheming. Because as far as they are concerned, if you say you are son of God, it means you are in God's class. And if you are in God's class, it means you are equaling yourself with God. So they said Jesus blasphemed. And so Jesus was answering them. And you would think Jesus will answer them by doing something supernatural. Look at the argument Jesus used to validate why he says he's son of God. He said, Jesus answered and said to them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are what? Did he say, I say you are humans? I say you are what? See, you were created to function in the God class. You were created. As Moro said, human means God in humus or God in dust. You were created to function in the God class. This is why Jesus, the third person, second person of the Godhead, is presenting this argument. Is it not written in your law that you are, he said you are God's because you are the children of the Most High? Go to the next verse. He said, if he called them gods, unto whom the word of the Lord came, and the scriptures cannot be broken. That means what was said is true forever. It can't change in any context. If he says you are gods, unto whom the word of the Lord came, 
and the scriptures cannot be broken. See what he said in the next verse. Why then say ye of him whom the father had sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said I'm the son of God. Why are you saying I am blaspheming when I call myself the son of God? When he already told you that you too are gods because you are children of the Most High. This is Jesus presenting an argument to justify his claim of being son of God. I'm not saying you are part of the Godhead. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying you are part of the God class. Because there is a, a dimension of divinity that has been allocated to you. Help the sister. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Hear what the Bible said. See, all the apostles knew this. All. All of them knew this. This was their mentality. Peter said, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So what Peter is saying here is everything God gives to us is not to enjoy life. Enjoying life is byproduct. When God gives you influence, when God gives you wisdom and that wisdom produces resources, it's not about the money. He said all of these things are designed to show you that you are supposed to function in a realm of life. He said he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to what? To glory and to virtue. We were created to live from the realm of glory. We were created to function from the realms of glory. We are designed to stand with glorified beings as though they are brethren. We were designed to function with glorified entities. So when an angel shows up, he is part of us but in a different quadrant. When somebody comes from heaven, he is part of us but from a different quadrant. We are created to come into the company of the glorified. So if you read verse 4 of this scripture, see what the Bible said. Please, write these scriptures down. Meditate on them. This is what makes men. He said, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this you may be what? Is it to have a car? Is it to have money? All of those are byproduct. He said, by the precious promises of God that you might become a partaker of his divine nature. You are brought into the company of the glorified. You are brought into the company of the exalted. You are brought into the company of divinity so that you can also function as one who is of that order. This is God's plan. This is God's plan. Let us make man. Not, as, not like another animal. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness so that dominion can be a byproduct. Dominion is not the focus. Dominion is a byproduct of the class where this man functions. And this is what Jesus affirmed. If he says you are God's unto whom the word of the Lord came and the scriptures cannot be broken, why then do you say, I blaspheme when I say I'm the son of God? For according as his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. He said, having given us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these promises, we may not become car owners. Those are byproducts. That by these promises, we may not become influential. Those are byproducts. They are necessary for dominion. But by these promises, we may become something that any other person who doesn't have what we have can never become. By this, we may become partakers of his divine nature. Partakers. We are partakers of the God order. We are partakers of the God class. We are partakers. Join company with the glorified. This is God's plan. This is why when Satan came, his target was not what the man had. Because Satan knows that a man's value is not in the multitude of what he possesses. When Satan came, he targeted 
what made man to be part of divinity. I was once an angel. I was once among the principalities of heaven. I was once among the archangels. I led quadrants of the angelic order. Our goal as princes of Zion is to stand in the courtroom. Our goal as princes of Zion is to ascend to the heights of heaven to behold God. That's the obsession of all the princes. Even Gabriel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence. That's what gave us ranking. But we discovered that God created a man that God goes to look for. Why we are looking for God is looking for this man. What is on his life? And so when Satan came, he went to attack the seal of divinity that was in the man. And he knew that there was one technology of dethroning this man from the rank where God was seeking. And the thing he did was to introduce rebellion into the man. That means the man himself voluntarily walked away from what God gave him. Because the way God designed the system, God couldn't reject him. So I need to create a system that makes this man walk away from what God has given him. So rebellion was the only way the man could be dethroned. And when the man was dethroned, that was when he realized his true riches. That was when he discovered that his riches were not the apples he was fighting after. The riches were not the gardens. He discovered that there were five things God gave him that fortified him to function in the God class. The first was God's nature. You know, he was not there in the studio when God deliberated for his creation. Let us make man in our own image. So the first thing God gave the man was his nature. That when you see the man, you see God. When the man shows up, he models divinity. He reflects divinity. The man is like a theater through which you can enter into divine dimensions. It was impossible to be able to relate to this God. It was impossible. You couldn't even look at him, let alone study him. The moment he appears, everyone fell on their faces to the ground. The first time God created a model that you could look at to see God was through the man. But the man never knew that was his wealth. He never knew that he was like a screen that manifests divine dimensions. It was when he left the garden that he discovered he was naked. What has happened to me? Where is my covering of glory? What is it that has gone out of me? When I stood before God stood, what has happened? He had lost something. What brought him into the God class? That he could look around and say, you are lion. And when they checked the, the diary of heaven, that was lion. He said, you are spider. When they checked the diary of heaven, that was spider. All of a sudden, he had no access to those rooms of glory where he traversed effortlessly. Something had gone wrong because he had fallen. Nature had been withdrawn. And when Jesus was talking to this man in John 8:44, he said, you are of your father. He didn't say you are from. Because this is a conversation of nature. You are of your father, the devil. You have taken another dimension. Because when Jesus walked the earth, there was a contrast between the God man and the fallen man. Concerning Jesus in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, he said God who had sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the, the fathers by the prophets. He said he has in this last day spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and by whom also he made the world. He said who being the brightness of his glory. So Jesus is of God but the fallen man was of the devil. So when you looked at that man you could see the serpentine nature in his wickedness in his greed in his lust. Those were the things that oozed out of him. A nature that was not consistent with the nature of God had been born. And it was, it was something that came out of him because of rebellion. That's why you give birth to a child. Two years old, he's selfish. One year old, he's selfish. It's a serpentine order. They have lost glory. They have lost divine nature. So the first thing the man discovered he lost was God's nature. The second thing he discovered is he lost was God's likeness. The ability to function like God. The ability to manifest the dimensions of God. You know when I meditate on Genesis sometimes I'm left in bewilderment and I'm asking myself how could one man name all the animals? There are animals that are in the belly of the ocean. You know some of the animals Adam named we have not discovered them living on earth for this long more than 6,000 years uh, the animals Adam named we have not been able to we have not discovered all of them 
How could he do this? Is it that he went to the belly of the sea or he called them to come? <laughs> because in the days of Noah, we saw that all the animals came to him two by two. That's dominion. He ruled over the animal realm. One man. And he was never told what the, name, the names were. The Bible said any name he called them, that was the original name God gave it. So he was functioning at God's frequency. That's likeness. He taught the thoughts of God. He acted the acts of God. And it was natural to him. Abraham was put to sleep because God wanted to form a woman. And when God formed the woman and Adam, I beg your pardon, woke up. The moment he looked at her, he should have even waited for God to introduce her. He said, this is the bone of my bone. The flesh of my flesh. He said, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. That means he was sleeping yet conscious. He was more spirit than he was flesh. He operated in a divine order. The same way you can't hide anything from God. It was difficult to hide things from this man. He was functioning in God's likeness. He could manifest the excellencies of glory. Such were the powers that the man wielded in the garden. But he was falling. Those were the things Satan was afraid of. I no longer have access to God. I will now ask questions to know what God is doing. Because when he showed up, did God say? Did God say? When did I relegate to a point where I can't operate in the God power anymore? And then there's another man, younger than me, naive in kingdom administration and governance, yet walking in powers that are supernatural. I must bring him down. Because if I bring him down, since I'm older than him, I'm more ancient than him, I will rule him. So the fight was to dethrone the man from glory. And the man never knew until he was driven from the garden. That was when he discovered he had lost God's nature, he had lost God's likeness. And that was not all. The man was clothed with God's presence. When that man showed up, the government of heaven showed up. When you met that man, you met God. Because the way the visible dimensions of God were manifested was when that man was sent on an errand. Oh, you need to see the powers of men who have understood this truth. You can come to a place and things happen on their own accord. Not because you are talking. But because men were designed to carry government. See, spirits don't move in space. Spirits move with atmospheres. When a man leaves this room, he will leave the space behind. Because you can't travel with space. But when a spirit is coming, he carries his atmosphere. Spirits carry their, their environment with them. And the environment of the man of glory was the glory of God. When that man showed up, the glory of God traveled with him like an envoy. And those were the powers that the man had in the garden. But when he fell, he was driven. And he no longer had power to carry God's presence around. You know, God, God gave us a taste of what it looks like to carry the Shekinah when he delivered Israel from Egypt. He told them, you don't need much. Let my presence go with you. You will understand the glory that I designed man for. And when they moved, all they had was the cloud. The Bible said he went before them at night as a pillar of fire and by day as a pillar of cloud. It gave them direction and it also protected them. And then they didn't know the power of what they carried. Until after many years, they discovered there was no feeble among their tribes. And they began to wonder, we are not taking drugs. Why are we strong? Presence. They discovered that even their clothes were not torn. You wear clothes for 20 years and the clothes is still new. And then they started wondering, what was going on? Presence. They came to a point where the shoes of their children were growing with the legs of their children. You make shoe for a one-year-old child. He's 15. The shoe is still intact and fit. Presence. Now, people were trying to curse them. They couldn't succeed. The Bible said they had to hire a man that had authority. Renowned. If he blesses, you are blessed. If he curses, you are cursed. And when they brought the man to curse them, by the name of Balaam, he tried several times. All trans couldn't come. And so the man concluded, there is no divination against Israel. There is no enchantment against Jacob. Hear this. He didn't say, I can't curse them. He said, there is no curse. That means I went to the register of curses. I went to the chronicles of the spirit. Where curses are excavated from. When I write the name Israel, curses can't come out. The system malfunctions when I call Israel. They were not praying. There is no enchantment against Jacob. There's no, so when you carry the glory, 
Lord, protect me. It's no longer a prayer in your outline. Because something covers you that frustrates the attacks of the enemy. Did you not read Psalm 91? It says, Him that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, He shall say of his God, You are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I shall trust. He says, Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. He said, A thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right hand. It shall not come near me, for with thy eyes thou wilt behold and they see the recompense of the wicked. He said, Because you have made God, even the most high, your habitation shall no evil come near thy dwelling. There is a realm where evil advises themselves. You want to attack Randolph, don't go there. You will be in danger. Elohim Adonai. Mahela Katore Barakata. Zezezene, Zezezene. Elohim Adonai. Ilakuma Tayata. Sazani Barano Sadaka. Tatalisha Barata. Veretani Baroate. Atela Katuna Sabakaya. Veriano Sabak. Maracatina Swati. See, hear this. A generation will rise that when men are in danger, they just say, please come and stay with us for three days. It's not prayer. Just come. When you come into that family, because you enter, they will know Satan will flee because you came. See, that's what we are talking about here. We are talking about the emergence of a new order. Christianity is not a religion. It's divinity expressed through humanity. Talk the secrets of God, the oracles of his spirit. Welcome. A time will come, business owners will look for Christians. Just join the board. As a non-executive member, we just need your presence here. Because when you are here, things will happen. Did you read about, about Laban? He said, I've come to understand by divination. God bless me because of you. And it was not just Isaac, even Joseph. Potiphar, it was recorded. I am blessed because you are here. That's when the world will know that we are the salt of the earth. That's when they will know that we are the light of the world. Satan knew that what God was creating was something that angels have never seen. Why do you think God had to hide the man in dust? The glory he carried was too much. If the glory is external like angels, that man will be worshipped. Because the raw material for making the man was God. They say God breathed into his nostrils and the man became a living soul. So God hid himself. Represent me here but let's hide some dimensions. Otherwise, Men will mistake you for me. And some people start traveling to worship you instead of seeking me. That's why worship in itself is our ability to humble ourselves and direct men to God. Although I look like him, but he's the one. <laughs> Elohim Adonai. Ah, ah, Elohim. Elohim Adonai. Ah, that could host him and reflect him. And the plan of God is for his agenda on the earth to advance from one level of dominion to another. This is the summary of the gospel. All the spirits are aware of this. That's why when the agenda for creating man began, there was unrest in the spirit realm. It became like the theater through which God's dimensions were seen. And so every spirit were wondering, what is this creature? We have been with you for aeons. We are in a timeless dimension. We thought we'd known everything. We thought the excellency, the totality of excellency was in us. So much so that one of us was deceived and thought it could be like you. When did you begin this new project? So there are dimensions in you that have not been seen. Yes. That's what man came to model. But the man was not aware. Satan knew. And he robbed him of his nature. Robbed him of God's likeness robbed him of God's presence and that was not all he robbed him of dominion because dominion is a byproduct of likeness and, and nature if we make man in our image and our likeness he must have dominion 
So when he lost nature, lost likeness, he lost dominion. And so the man became a servant. For it's a law in the spirit realm. Whomever you yield yourself, servant to obey. He said, the servant of him you are, whom you have obeyed. So when he followed the counsel of the devil, he made himself a slave of the devil. That's why on the Mount of Temptation, Satan came to Jesus and said, bow to me. I will give you all of the glories of the world. It has been delivered to me. I wasn't the one who earned it, but someone gave it to me. And God never challenged him. Because there are spiritual legalities. Man lost authority. And that was not all. He didn't complete the cycle of creation by eating of the tree of life. Genesis 2 verse 9, there was a tree planted there called the tree of life. If he had eaten of it, he would have become like a God man. But he never made it to that tree. Rather, he ate the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So he lost God's nature, lost God's likeness, lost God's presence, lost God's authority and dominion, and he lost the life of God. When we speak about the spiritual oppression called born of God, we are talking about an awakening into the God man. Sit down for a moment. An awakening into the reality of the God man. First John chapter 5 verse 1. This is where the message will begin from. If we come into what God has planned, men must be born of God. We can be edited by counseling. We cannot be modified by wise sayings. We must be reborn to be able to come into the fullness of that which God wants to achieve. We must be reborn. He said, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And he said, everyone that loveth him, that begotted, that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of him. So there is a system of restoring man to his fullness in God. And that system is the system of rebirth. If men are not born of God, they can become entities that host and mirror God. And by implication, they cannot extend God's kingdom and God's government as his functionaries on the face of the earth. Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus. John chapter 3, from verse 1 to verse 8. And Jesus was showing us the dynamics of coming into the fullness of what God has designed us to be. The Bible said there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So these were those who had credentials. They were authorities in that era. Meanwhile, all they had were dead letters. They didn't even know the reality they thought they were gatekeeping. Because when you become able to reflect God, that's when you truly know something. But these were theologians who thought they were, you know, when John came baptizing, they went to him and were asking, by whose authority are you doing this? You didn't consult with us. We never gave you any certificate. Which college did you graduate from? Because there were many colleges. Jesus gathered his disciples together and said, who do men say I am? And the disciples were bringing references from different colleges. Some say you are Jeremiah's. Others say you are Isaiah's. Some say you are John the Baptist, come from the dead. So these were people X-raying their brain, trying to excavate spiritual truth. God's servant was sharing yesterday, he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. You can't find spiritual things by exerting your mind. It is locked in a realm where intelligence can't access. It must be given. It must be revealed. So after they concluded, who do, they, they gathered and concluded, John 3, let's go to verse 2. So they showed up. He said the same came to Jesus by night. He was too noble to, see, to be seen with Christ in the daytime. This young man, this rascal that is everywhere people are following, what is he saying? Okay, in order not to affect our integrity and reputation, let's sit him down in the evening and find out what he thinks he knows. <laughs> so he came at night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. We have checked you. We studied you, we evaluated you, we scrutinized you. We have concluded that you are truly a teacher and we have concluded that you are from God. And the reason is because the miracles you are doing, it is not in any of our textbooks. 
none of us is able to do this. And because we know that this is the finger of God, we conclude that you came from God. Notwithstanding. Verse 3. Let's go into a conversation. The moment he said that, Jesus answered him and began to reveal to him the challenge and the limitations they had. He said, Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, most assuredly I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot access divine dimensions. They are not studied. They are given. And if it is not given, even if you study, you can't have it. The reason you study to know it is because it was first of all given to you. If it is not, you can't have it. Except a man be born again. He can't see the kingdom of God. He said, Nicodemus said unto him, you have brought something that we have never come across in all of our expeditions. We have studied writings, studied Torahs. You are saying something that is out of our sphere. How can a man be old and then enter his mother's womb a second time to be born again? And Jesus went further to tell him, Verily, verily, these things are most assured realities. I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. What you are trying to enter through the energy of the flesh is impossible. You are routing it the wrong way. If you want to enter the kingdom, you must be reborn. If you are not born of God, kingdom is not of you. It's locked away from your realm. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. As the wind blow it. <laughs> oh, the Bible said there's a path that no fowl know it. See, there are realms that are not, men can never access them. Never. No matter how they try, they can never access them. But those realms are given to us who are children of God, yet we have neglected them. The things men are trying to find through different pathways are the things that were gifted to us, yet we have neglected. He said, as the wind blow it. He said, thou listest not from whence it cometh or where it goeth. He says, so are they that are born of the Spirit. So those who are born of the Spirit, they have access to the kingdom and they are invincible. So if you want to become the man of God, he said, you must be born of God. In the course of this conference, we are going to explain different dimensions of this reality. Because like I told you from the beginning, the emphasis of an apostolic conference is to raise men. Men that know God and men that have the ranking in the spirit to handle divine agenda and to advance them. But these things can't happen except as we get back to the foundation. This is the credo of apostolic powers. A man must be born of the spirit. A man must be ruled of the spirit so that they can carry the powers of the spirit. There are four dimensions to this reality. I want to speed up. Number one, a spiritual rebirth. You must be born of the spirit to be born of God. If you are not born of the spirit, you are not born of God. You must come to a point where you become an offspring of the spirit of God. And the Bible showed us the channel of spiritual rebirth. He said it's to believe in Christ as the son of God. So if faith awakens in your spirit man and you can believe that Jesus is the son of God, the Bible said something happens to your own spirit. And the reason is this. Jesus is the first spirit that was born in the likeness of humanity. And so if your spirit cannot accommodate the mystery of incarnation, you can never become like that. Because it was in Christ that that order was pioneered. The first time a spirit took on bodily form was in Christ Jesus. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. In verse 14 of John 1, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. So if you can't believe in Christ, you can never be born again. You must come to a point where your spirit is able to accommodate that yes, a spirit can take up human form. It is in that belief that you too are brought into that order. This is why to be born of the spirit, you must believe first of all that Jesus 
is the son of God. And this is why no religion of the world has eternal life. It's impossible. There are other dimensions to this reality. But this is the foundation. Because if you don't believe that spirit beings can take up human bodies, it will be impossible for you to be numbered into spirit assembly. Because Christ was manifested in the flesh. Then he was justified in the spirit. Then he was seen of angels. Then he was received to glory. So the journey to glory is first of all glory to flesh. If spirit does not become human, human cannot assume the position of spirit. So for you to be born of God, you must believe that Jesus came in the flesh. This is why we preach the gospel. You know, I tell people, they say, how can God give birth to a child? God does not have a wife. And you'll see how backward their understanding is. Because light has not been shown. Even among organisms, you see every organism that gives birth by marrying, an amoeba that is at a lower level of existence is able to divide into two and give birth without a wife. Is it God that must have a wife to have a son? Because they are not taught. You know, I tell my people, when men talk, you hear volume. But when God talks, the voice of God works. The voice of God came walking in the garden because the voice of God is also a person. So when we talk about the father and the son, we are not talking biological realities. When God wants to run errands, because there are many errands that God can commit to angels. One of them is creation. Because if you commit the errand of creation to an angel, that angel becomes the creator. So there are many errands God runs himself. So when God wants to run an errand that God must be the one to run, what God does is that God sits as father. Father means fundus foundation. It means pata, origin and nourisher. So God sits and God talks. When God sends his word, the word of God comes out as God and goes to work. So the one that is seated is God father because that is origin. The one that goes to work is God son because that's the one that came from the father. This is the foundation of spiritual rebirth. If you can't believe that Jesus is the son of God you can never be born of God but the moment you believe it the same reality is credited into you and you too are born of God so the first thing about spiritual rebirth is this the doctrine of incarnation the understanding of spirit made flesh which Jesus pioneered and made available to us the second thing about being born of God, please sit down, is adoption into sonship. Because the moment you believe that truth, what God does is that he sends the spirit of Christ into you so that the spirit of Christ makes you to become a partaker of the divine. That's the adoption. In John chapter 1, from verse 10, he said he came into the world. Although the world was made by him, he said, the world knew him not. He came unto his own, his own received him not. He said, but as many as received him. He said, to them he gave the right to be called the sons of God. He said, sons born not by the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but by the will of God. So we were adopted to become sons. And this is not a legal transaction where God just sat down and said, now you are my son. No. The way the adoption took place is that upon your belief of Jesus being the son of God the Holy Ghost was sent into your heart the Bible said in Romans chapter 8 verse 15 it said the spirit of God cried in our hearts Abba father so the adoption is an organic reality where the spirit of Christ is shared with you so he enters into you and makes you to become like Christ this is why first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 it says, him that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So when we are talking about spiritual betting, we are talking about a, an economy of the spirit that made you to become one with Christ. And so you can't judge your reality by your circumstances anymore. If you judge your reality by your circumstances, you are wrong. See, your circumstances are true, but they are not truth. They are true because in the light of the environment where you are, it's a fact. 
But when you take it from that environment to another environment, it's no longer consistent. When something is truth, it holds the same value in every environment. So when we say you are one with Christ, it's a reality here if you know it. And it's also a reality in the spirit of in the realm of the spirit of God. And it's also a reality in the demonic realm. Demons know that we are like God. Demons know that we are one with God. Angels know that we are one with God. We are the only ones who don't know. So we judge ourselves based on our certificate. I have a master's degree from Oxford. That is good. It has sharpened your mind. But that's not who you are. Oh, my boss just fired me. I'm finished. Finished? We don't finish. Out of our bellies flow rivers of living waters. We don't finish. We don't finish. That guy said, I'm not interested in a relationship anymore. Where do I go from here? He's my hope. That's wrong. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Nobody defines who I am. Nobody. Even if I'm in the desert, that which is in me can create a change. He said, for until the spirit be poured again upon us from on earth, the wilderness shall be turned into a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall be counted for a forest. A man who carries the spirit can turn a desolate wilderness to a forest. The problem with us is that we don't know that we are born of God. That's why we allow things to define us. Listen, don't take pride in things. It's a falling state. It's called pride of life. Don't let your car define you. It's a means to an end. You need it to run around. No, don't let who is around you define you. Let God define you. Because him that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. It's one spirit. If anything should make you feel relevant, let them be the divine essence, divine realities that flow out of you. Because those ones cannot be bought. And those ones hold value amongst men and amongst spirits. Paul said, make boasts in nothing. He said, all things are yours. Don't make boasts in things. What now differentiates us from the hidden? There's something we have that the world cannot give. We have something of heaven. That's who we are. That's who we are. I hear God. I can speak for God. The power of God is on my life. I can change circumstances by talking. I have authority over spirits. I have the wisdom of God. I can bring things that can't walk back to life because there's something on my inside. Those are the things that define me because I'm joined. The Bible said we are joined heirs with Christ. So everything that is Christ is mine. Everything that belongs to Jesus is mine. So if you define me outside of Christ, you don't know me. The only way you can articulate me correctly is when you know Christ because it's what makes Christ Christ that has made me who I am. The Bible said in Ephesians 2.10 He said we are God's handiwork. He said we were created in Christ Jesus unto good work. I was crafted from Christ. So the things that make Christ Christ are the raw materials that make me. And I will go into it in a moment. You will see the seven dimensions of Christ that defines who we are. Those are the things that prove that we are born of God. It doesn't matter if you are Asian, African, European. All of those things are human demographics. They have no weight where reality is defined. They have no weight. Don't let anybody intimidate you because of your skin color. And don't let anybody intimidate you because of his job or his ranking in a place. All of us are serving God on different platforms. You are joined with Christ. You are one spirit with him. That's why we are all brothers and sisters, regardless of which nation we came from. Something superior to natural forces bind us together. We are one with Christ. Sit down for a moment. Hey, ha. Hey, ha. Hey, 
implies is that you begin to walk in the power of transformation so that the things that made you a fallen entity before lose their power over you because you can't be born of God and be trapped in iniquity it's not consistent with divinity you can't be born of God and be a slave of sin you can't be born of God and be weak in sickness. So everything that had power, everything that trapped the fallen man loses his power over you. That's the corridor of transformation. Transformation is not just living above sin. It's living above everything that mastered the fallen man. So sickness, poverty, limitation, backwardness, stagnation, all of those things lose their ability. They are trying to hold you but they can't because new versions of you begin to evolve new versions because the version they are able to trap is the weak man of the flesh now the man of the spirit has been born and so the the falling forces are not educated enough to master the spirit man he said for the light shineth in the darkness dominion is not the absence of darkness is ruling even in the presence of darkness so lost suddenly can no longer tame you Sickness can no longer tame you. Jesus said if you drink any deadly thing, he calls it deadly. But if he enters you, even though it's deadly, it's useless on your inside. First John, look at scriptures. Let me give you scriptures. First John 3. Hmm. From verse 7. Or let's read verse 9 since I don't have time. He said, whosoever is born of God, he said, doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him and cannot sin because he is born of God. So when you are born of God, you are introduced into a new system of operation. This is beyond willpower. This is beyond discipline. You know, Paul, he took poor time to come into this understanding. If you read Romans chapter 7 from verse 20 to 25, you will see that Paul was struggling because Paul discovered there were many laws operating on his inside. He said there is a law in me called the law of the mind that made me desire to do the will of God. He said, but in my attempt to do the will of God, I discovered there is another law in my members called the law of sin and death. He said the law of sin and death overrides my will and make me to do sin that I don't want to. So this thing is beyond an act. It's an organic reality that is locked into the fallen man. And if you go to chapter 8, Paul discovered there is another law that was introduced into us when we were born of God. He said the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. So when you are born of God, a new system is introduced into you. That system is what makes you rise above the forces that trapped and mastered the fallen man. 
So the more you yield to God, the more you learn the ways of God and become spiritually minded, the more empowered that law becomes. And so the precursor for activating that law is spiritual mindedness. That's why I tell Christians, you can be a Christian and hear testimonies of sickness and death as your predominant emphasis. You can be a Christian and focus on sin, on sin and iniquity as your predominant emphasis. Because if you focus on corruption, you will of corruption reap death. But if you focus on the things of the spirit, you'll discover that law is empowered on your inside. You find many Christians, 99% of the music they hear come from the falling world. And they think they can walk in dominion. You can't be one born of God because you have exposed yourself to the technology of the fall. You find Christians, all their friends are talking seduction, iniquity. It's something they delight in when they are gisting. They are gisting about sin. They are gisting. They are exposing to death. Ask those who exercise dominion. All their conversations are within the premise of life. All my friends are people who know about God and manifest Him. So if we sit and talk, it becomes an explosion. You hear somebody talk some things and you are not even talking, but the witness that comes from Him chokes lost in your spirit. Choke it. Choke it. Because He says some things that awakens powers in your spirit. Meet some of the people we talk with. You sit down, somebody just looks at cancer. He say, let tumors dematerialize. He's just talking. And then you see people jumping. I had tumor on my breast, it has gone. I had tumor in my abdomen, it has gone. And then you are sitting there, come on. What he said here was not even powerful. How come? You will lose appetite for food. You will sit down, your friend, he calls somebody, say, you are Matthew. You came from Limpopo. I'm seeing, and then you are wondering, well, who is telling you this thing? And the next thing, appetite. Rise up. You can't hear such things and go and, and, and cooperate with the devil. It's not possible. The reason it looks as if nothing is at work in you is because you are exposed to the wrong energy. Those of us who are born of God, we live above the forces of the fall. And the way we do it is because we are exposed to things that makes us spiritually minded. So when we are talking about being born of God, we are talking about dominion over the forces of the fall because the inoculation of God in your spirit man empowers you and makes it impossible for you to be a slave. I don't know when last I took drug. Not because it's a sin. I'm exposed to frequencies. There are times when my body feels sick and I hear some testimonies. I hear some testimonies and something writes it. I'm not saying don't take drugs. So don't get me wrong. It's not zeal. It's awakening. It's awakening. It's awakening. If I get to a point where I try, try, it doesn't work, I will. But I'm telling you that nothing has knocked me down. And it's possible that you can have a warfare around your health. And the Lord will instruct you, treat yourself. Go ahead and do it. There's nothing wrong with it. But what I'm saying is, as you journey in this rebirth journey, you will discover that you keep going to levels where everything that mastered the fallen man will lose its powers in your life. That's what it means to be born of God. Living above the powers of the elements. And number four, please sit down. Is victory over the world. First John 5 verse 4. He said, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is where dominion comes in. He said, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. He said, this is the victory that overcomes the world. So, this new order of life makes you a champion. You can't be in class and come last. Because you are functioning beyond intellect. You are operating by an excellent spirit. The Bible said Daniel and his friends, they were ten times better than their peers in everything the king asked of them. 
by the operation of the excellent spirit you overcome you are an overcomer you go into sport they are wondering whether you are running with four legs you are literally manufacturing skills and people watch you to learn new skills from you it's called overcoming the world overcoming the world is not running away from the world is dominating the world because if you don't dominate the world you can't bring the government of heaven the reason you will speak and they will hear is because you are ahead of them so everybody who is born of God is a champion in their respective spheres you are among doctors you are a doctor with a different because when you do everything that is in the books and it doesn't work you have a healing finger yes that's what happens to those who are born of God. Go into the business. Apply the principles with them. But beyond the principle, there's such a thing called the hand of God. It came upon Elijah. He overran, outran the chariots of Ahab. I'm saying this so that you have the consciousness. Don't come and say, oh, they, according to studies, they say it takes 20 years. Who said so? Your case is different. Don't lock yourself down by the experiences of fallen men. It took somebody 20 years. Does not mean it won't take you six months. So don't create a limitation around your life. You have overcome the world. When he says overcomes the world, he's not just talking about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. That's inclusive. But he's saying, lead everywhere you come. You are the head and not the tail. You are on top and on top only. That is now your position because you are born of God. How can God be involved in a marathon and lose? How can God be involved in a scientific research and lose? It can't work. At the age of 12, Jesus sat down with the doctors of the law. The Bible said he was asking them questions and he was answering them. Because he asked questions that they couldn't answer. He had to answer himself. He wasn't answering their questions. A boy of 12 years asked professors questions and they couldn't answer and he answered and you you are saying guy this sociology is so hard i don't know why i'm not understanding anything i'm reading not you you understand everything you read because you have the mind of christ all you need to do is a new consciousness that unlocks your abilities this is what god has brought us into do you think you can talk and kings will hear you because you come in the dress of a spiritual man you must manifest a light that they have never seen. He said, Gentiles come to your light. He said, Kings come to the brightness of your rising. Listen, before you tell the king that Jesus is Lord, you must present something that they know that this is beyond the realm of men. You can't be failing and attracting them to your God. Your God that produces failure. Is that the God they want to listen to? Without God, they are already doing well. You need to show them that there is an excellent realm. Where God can take them. And beyond that realm, there is also eternity in view. But they must see the residue of eternity in your today. He said, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So you overcome all the lust of the world. But over and above that, you also rule above the systems of this world. Daniel had an excellent spirit. Ten times better. You know, when Joseph came before the Pharaoh, and interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh said, in as much as God has shown you this, he said, there's no one in your class. He said, according to your word, let the nations be ruled. You have demonstrated the wisdom that nobody in Egypt has. Who else can be above you? Who else? So on one side, the guy refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife. That's a dimension of the world, but that's not all there is to it. On another side, he explained what the wise men of Egypt could not explain. So when we say you have overcome the world, we mean you are not a slave of the forces of lust and of Satan. And over and above that, you are also a leader in your own sphere of influence. You are a leader. I prophesy over someone, the grace that sets you apart, the grace that puts you on top, it rests upon you now. My time is gone. Oh. A day will come when we will have fellowship beyond the stars. Where time does not exist. Time. 
we will just be there for forever and ever. I was with Pastor Randolph yesterday and we were there till 1 a.m. Ah, what a fellowship. And God was moving till 1 a.m. That day when you don't bother, how will I get home? Because the presence is home. Champions will rise from among us. Champions will rise from among us. I said champions will rise from among us. Sit down, let me round up. What I wanted to teach on tonight, I've not even entered. I wanted to teach on the seven dimensions of the man born of God. The seven dimensions. Maybe as I have opportunity in the course of this conference, I will touch them one after the other. But let me list them. My friend said yesterday that land is one of the seven powers of God and he didn't say more. Let me list so that you go and study it. <laughs> Glory to God. Number one is the divine life. Every man who is born of God carries the life of God. Number two is immortality. Immortality is authority over corruption. Number three is the womb that bets nations. That's what you also call the mind of Christ. Number four is the faith of the Son of God. That's the eyes that does not see impossibility. Number five is the authority of Christ. That's the power to rule in the demonic realm and in every other realm there is. Number six is the righteousness of God. That's the authority to reign in life. And number seven is the witness of the Holy Ghost. When a man shows up in the place, he brings the literal government of heaven. See, the reason we show up and somebody said, I'm sick, and you say you are healed. You know, it's, you are not saying be healed. You are overriding that reality. I'm sick, you say, no, you are healed. That means I'm telling you healing is your reality, not sickness. And that reality that you create dominates the old reality. That is witness. It's beyond talking. It's witness. If what I'm saying to you tonight is just an information, I wasted your time. But you will discover as you leave this place that most of the things I've been sharing, you start seeing the manifestation. Then you will know that beyond what you hear, your reality is being reprogrammed. That's the difference. Most of you will leave this meeting. You will discover that the capacity to bring divinity to a place will happen to you. You are in a place, people are complaining, struggling. You just talk and things change. Even you will not know how. You are somewhere, somebody say, I'm dying. I don't know what's happening. Say, no, you can't die now. How can you say you are dying? You didn't pray. And the person will turn five minutes later and say, ah, the pain is gone. I'm where? What has happened? You have brought God. See, this thing is not religion. It's life in the spirit. It's life in the spirit. It's life. Somebody shows up confused. He doesn't know what to do. And you are just gisting with him and you say, why don't you do this and do that? It becomes a prophetic direction. And then he says, that's the answer I've been looking for for 10 years. That's the realm we are talking about. So when we share these things, we are introducing men to realms. That's what apostolic authority comes to make happen. Let it flow, let it flow. So let it flow right here, right now. And as the river flows, begins to bring every death into life. It's a life-giving river. So let it flow right here, right now. I was sharing with them in Manchester three weeks. Is it three or four weeks ago like this? And a woman came with crutches, struggling, struggling. No prayer. Madam, you are in an atmosphere of power. Drop it. Drop it. And she thought it was a joke. Yeah, drop it. And she dropped it. She started walking. And the leg was gaining strength. 
they left. What, what, what I needed to do was just to channel her consciousness. I didn't need to close eyes and say, now sickness go. You can do that. But there's a realm where everything is open to songs. Everybody can manifest. Drop it. Drop it. You are in an atmosphere. Take what you want. Take what you The word is catalambano. Don't wait for Take it. Take it. Take it. And the woman was running. She was running. She couldn't stop. She was so excited. That means I could, I could drop this crutch before now. Yes. It's not about the meeting. It's about the consciousness. You have been brought into an economy. And that's where we live every day of our lives. Church is designed to train, to equip, and to enhance. So that we carry to our reality. Nobody left that meeting and said, oh, powerful man of God. Everybody became aware that we could drop crutches. And if we can drop crutches, we can tell others to drop them. By the time I finish here tonight, casually, two months we leave people. I was preaching in, in Kaduna one month ago. And when I finished teaching, I said, if you are healed, come out. <laughs> and some people were looking at me. You have not prayed for the sick. I said, I don't need to pray. He said, Jesus was teaching and the power of God was present to heal. The power has intelligence to heal. He knows those who need it. And over 40 people came out. Over 40. And I'm not saying I had pain on my back. No. A woman that was bedridden, who was healed listening to the message online and then had an accident, broke her leg, was walking. Bones had received strength. Not because prayer, but because, you know, when we are talking about your reality, you are awoken. Because your spirit is telling you, this is who I am. Some of you, by hearing me now alone, nobody can reject you again. Nobody can reject you. Because now you know, I am not rejectable. I'm not, I'm not. There's something on my life. Some of you, by hearing what I'm sharing tonight alone, you will discover that more than 50% of your warfare will finish. Because you will know that, oh, demons are actually afraid of me. My God. That means when I get home, anyone remaining there is in trouble. Somebody give the Lord a shot. Hear me. See, some of you by hearing what I'm, I'm sharing now, you will go and start that business. That company that you were feeling inferior, how can I start a company? You will just go and discover that the power is there. The power was always there. And you will start some of you who have been struggling with ministry, struggling with what you are doing, you just discover now that gods don't struggle with what they do. And things will change. Things will just be changing. Every day. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. So let it flow right here, right now. And as the river flows, he begins to bring, bring every death into life. life. It's a life giving river. Oh, oh, let it flow right here, right now. As the river flows, as the river flows, it begins, begins to bring, bring every death into life. life. It's a life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right here. now there's a flow of the energy of life some of you that things have died in your hands some of you things you've lost things that you were in charge of something will flow now won't, you won't just have restoration but you'll become a force in those areas and suddenly nothing can die around you again oh my god Oh my God. Okay, let me show you what I'm saying now. Bring three people for me now. I want to, I want to begin to release. Release it. I'm the one with the mic, so I can give administration. Bring three people here now. The river, the river. No, 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 don't come. Don't come. Receive where you are. Well, those of you who are here, don't worry, you will receive. Just leave that hand. Leave those hands. Oh my God. If you know where God has brought us, we are demonstrators. 
He said, I did not come with you with, to, to you with excellency of speech. I came in the demonstration. In the demonstration. Father, let that river flow now. Let three of you be drowned. Three. I just said three. Now be drowned. Be drowned. Be drowned. Be drowned. Be drowned. What shall save them from you? Oh my God. Now, some of you will be drunk in the spirit. You'll be drunk. Be drunk in the spirit. Let the waters of life flow into your vessel. Let it flow. 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 What shall save them? Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Right here, right now. As the river flows, it begins to bring everything to life. It's a life giving river. Oh, let it flow, right here, right here, right now. Bring them to the altar. Bring them here. La 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 judgment when we say light we are not just saying you know some things it's authority to bring judgment because the light shines in the darkness the power of light is revealed in darkness so what God is saying is that he will give authority to some of you to begin to judge darkness to judge evil to judge wickedness to judge iniquity and light is also the power for visibility he said, that which makes manifest. Bring them up so they don't fall on themselves. He said, that which makes manifest is light. This is why somebody can be doing something and suddenly, poop, he explodes everywhere. And everywhere is noised abroad. It's light. He said, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness, they saw a great light. When light comes, the power for influence is confirmed. Can you lift your right hand toward heaven? Oh, it's your spirit that will catch it. Oh, your spirit, your spirit, your spirit. For the light shineth in the darkness. It shineth. It's your light that will attract men and men of relevance to you. They say Gentiles, they don't come to you. They don't need you. But they come to your light. And he said, kings, come to the brightness of your rising. There are many things you are doing that you need kings, but you need light. When light comes, the presence of kings is a byproduct. Father, let the power for light rest upon them now. Bring these people up first. Bring them up first. Let me manage what is happening here. The law of hosts. Lift your hands toward heaven. The king. Some of you will receive light that empowers for judgment. You will talk. You will talk. Policies will be changed. You will talk. Demons will flee. You will talk. Evil will stop. Some of you will receive light that brings visibility. Suddenly kings will start looking for you. Men will seek you like precious jewels. And some of you will receive light 
that will give you influence in your generation. Lift your hands up now. Lift your hands. Let those encounters begin. Help them, help them. Let those encounters begin. Holy Ghost! Carriers of light, carriers of light. I'm seeing men with power to judge. Men with power. Women with influence and visibility. Wherever you are standing, I bring you under the government of light. Step into that glory. The Lord of hosts, the King, the King of glory, Yahweh Sabaoth, Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, reveal your glory, Yahweh. I'm seeing some of you downloads are happening to you now. There are activations of graces, activations. Activation. You can see yourself literally checking as though you have come on that current, electric current. Mareke take photos. Wherever you are, everyone receiving activation. Now let those power rest upon you. Yahweh, Please hear me. Some of you have been empowered with influence. The light that brings influence. Because God wants to open doors of nations, doors of systems, and doors into different races to you. But it takes empowerment. And so there are those of you here tonight that God will open you to races that you have no genealogical connection to. But by influence is the dimension of light. Can you lift your hands? This one is for those who want to be used of God. You want to be used of God. Father, like it was in the days of the Christ, the people who sat in darkness, they are about to see light. They are about to... I'm keeping it calm because tonight is introduction. Tomorrow we'll go revival. Wherever they are, there are seven, seven of you that God is opening the doors, the doors of nations and to races. You will speak to Caucasians. You will speak to blacks. Every kind of race. In the name of Jesus. Now let that power come upon you. Ushers, help them. Touch! For the next 10 minutes, 
since they won't be around, let them just speak to and show you some other dimensions. Now, I want to I want to cause sickness. I want to cause sickness. And I will do it in a very unconventional manner, highly unconventional, so that you can do it in the market. Don't go and say, oh, it's anointed. No, it's what I taught you now. Authority. When I teach tomorrow morning, I will go into the seven dimensions of the spirit man. The seven dimensions. But let's select some things that we want God to deal with. Number one, tumor. Number two, arthritis. Number three, ear challenges, deafness. Number four, eye conditions. And then number five, muscular and bone challenges. Let's channel God's power there. Now. So if you have any of those challenges, place your hand there. Please help her. If you have any of such, place your hand. Eye condition, ear condition, bone condition. Place your hand there. You have, you have a tumor. It's about to leave. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over sickness. Tumors. Arthritis. Fractures in the bone. Deafness. Blindness. All forms of eye contradiction. I take authority now. In the name of Jesus, I command those infirmities to leave now. I command those chains to break in the name of Jesus. Ears begin to hear perfectly. Eyes begin to see perfectly. Pains go forever. I command tumors to dematerialize now. Tumors, pile, breast lump, cancer. Go in the name of Jesus. And every form of bone fracture, shoulders, knee, every form of bone condition, I command you to leave now. These ones are sons of God. Every force that masters the fallen man cannot master you. And so I decree your liberty now. Eyes begin to see in the name of Jesus. Ears begin to hear in the name of Jesus. Pains be gone in the name of Jesus. Bones receive strength in the name of Jesus. Ah, the Holy Ghost is telling me about heart. 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 I'm hearing palpitations. Hole in the heart. Somewhere on this road towards the back there. I'm, 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 I'm hearing now there's somebody with a heart challenge towards the back there. Can that person, can you lift your hand? Bro, you are the one? Oh, but pl place your hand there. That condition is going now. In the name of Jesus, receive life. I command the palpitation to stop. I command that hole to be filled. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Breathe in and breathe out. lights are under that gallery there. The first lights towards the back there. I'm seeing somebody with a neck condition. It looks like a muscular condition on the neck. Your neck is stiff. You can't even turn it and there's pain. And I'm, 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 I'm picking that from there towards the back there. Is there anybody there with that neck condition? Lift your hand. You are too, You are in front. I mean a bit back. But you can put your hand there towards the back. Check your neck. Is there anybody who came with a neck condition? I, I'm, I'm receiving that now. There's pain on the neck. And it looks like a muscular condition or a fracture. It's, it's there with your neck. Where's the second hand? Lift it up. I'm seeing a third hand. Yes. That's closer to where I'm saying. Lift it. Okay. You come forward. Come forward. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm seeing the lady with a, a red something on the head. Scarf. She's where I said. You had that neck condition? You have a problem. What's the challenge? For the whole week, I've been, I've been having problems. 
more weak. There are about four of them. Come quick. I'm doing it like this so that you won't go and say, oh, it's apostle, it's apostle. No. It's what I taught you on the strength of what I taught you. Where are the other two? Come, come, come. You have, you have the challenge. There are four of them. Place your hand and rebuke the condition. Command it to go. Just command the pain to go. Don't, don't, don't do much. Allow the power of God to do it. Where are the people of the heart? Breathe. There are two of them. How do you feel? Come. Please come. that place now turn it aggressively don't be afraid don't go back we didn't pray for the for formality turn it turn it look for that challenge it is gone sister turn it check it check the challenge check it when you were there when you were there bro what was the challenge with your heart were diagnosed with cancer of the heart. How about you? That the normal part of my heart is the muscles grow dead. And I was in the hospital two or three weeks ago. The doctor told me I had one year to live. Well, that means you have overcome already because this is two years later. And you are still... Two years later and that was August last month. He told you August last month. He told me I had two years to leave. August last month? Yes. No, July last month. July last yes, month. Yeah. Okay, uh, we override that declaration. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, you live a, to a fruitful old age. Accomplishing all your purpose. I command this heart healed in Jesus' name. I command this tumor Go in the name of Jesus. Heart be healed. Be restored to normal functioning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is there something you couldn't do before? Was there anything you couldn't do before? I want you to check. Although you can still go and do another medical examination. You can. What, what couldn't you do before beyond feeling the difference? The way I was feeling my heart pumping. Your heart pumping was not properly. Oh, no wonder the Lord says you're breathing. Now breathe, let's see. Find out if it's fine. Please don't try to help God. If it's not fine, say it's not fine. But breathe and see if the pumping is normal. Rise up, brother. Was there something you couldn't do before? I felt it's almost like a mechanical movement in my heart. When you you felt a mechanical movement. Glory to God, even from the back. Now beyond that movement, was there something you couldn't do before now? What do you struggle doing? When I climb high elevation, I feel my breath. Your breath. The pain. So run on this staircase three times. And let's check. Brother, breathe and see. How are you feeling as you breathe? It's different. It's different now. In the name of Jesus, it's perfected. It's perfected. In Jesus' name. Now check your bodies. You had an ear condition before you came. You had an eye condition. You had an arthritis pain. You had the bone condition. Check it and see if there's any change. If you have received the healing. Check, check, check. Apostle, check. I want to draw the curtain here. We have another testimony here. We will take testimonies. Just a moment. How many of you have noticed a change? Ear, eye, you have noticed a change. Wave, wave at me properly. Wave. Come on. Give the Lord a big hand. All of you who notice changes, come to the front. 
Come to my right here. Mama, what happened? Let's hear from Mama. Don't say that I have two more in my in this the right side of your abdomen. Uh, the doctor said you had two more. Yes. Could you feel it before? Could you feel the tumor? Uh, yeah. You could feel it. Yeah. So what happened to you now? I'm now, I'm now better. I'm now worse. Check, check properly and be sure. Were you feeling pain or the tumor or something? Were you feeling it before? Uh, I'm feeling it before at my breast. You were feeling it even in your breast? Yeah. There was tumor in your breast? You said that, uh, that I have tumor. But did you feel anything before? You could feel yes. the tumor? Yes. You could feel the tumor before? Yeah. Can you feel it now? No, check, I'm check properly. No, mama, go that way and check properly. Let's be sure what we are saying. Sorry, Apostle. Doctors, Apostle. you can help. I'm her daughter-in-law. You are her daughter-in-law. She came visiting and then she began complaining of pain to her ribs. Yes. She went to the hospital. We did x-ray. There was a shadow at her right medial lobe. And then they sent her for CT. And then they said there was a tumor, which the doctor said it's likely to be cancer. We just had PET scan two days. Yesterday, she had PET scan, and we are still waiting for the result. But I believe mm -mm. that it Check, will be check. All of I us believe. I feel it. It's, it's in the lung, so it's... Okay, you couldn't feel it before it now. Be oh, it can't be felt. Yeah, it was. But Mama, did you feel any improvement? Yes, I have improvement. Improvement. You felt improvement. So we are here till Saturday, do another scan and come back. Let's be sure of the testimonies and we give glory to God properly. Let's take three or four testimonies quickly. Sit down for a moment. Apostle, this is pre-conference. Yes. About the neck that you mentioned as yes. you ministered it. We have got three of them. Three of them had neck conditions. So um, I was playing football some time ago. You were playing football. Give us a bit of volume. I was playing football some time ago and I got, I got fouled. I felt like you fell on your neck? Yes, I felt like my neck was like this on the ground. So there's a bone that was sticking out of my back. So a bone was sticking was, out? It was sticking out of my neck. So when you run your hand down. Okay, it was sticking out. Yeah, it would be like a bump. I've had it for like since December. And when you paid for me, the pain was gone. A bone was sticking out and you could feel the bone physically. The, the, the place has disappeared. Yes, the bone, the bone is straight. The bone is straight. Did you hear what this guy is saying? He fell and the bone was sticking out. And I took my hands down. I can't feel it. The bone has straightened. The bone has straightened. Can you still feel the pain? And you are just looking like that? Somebody give the Lord a shout! I saw a testimony like this when I traveled to Pakistan. A young boy, boy of about three years, a, the bone on the chest was sticking out and the chest was like this. The power of God hit him and he flattened and the child was healed. That's like the situation he had here. Come up here, brother. You fell, bone was sticking out and it has disappeared. Did you check well? Check. I don't know the look. Check. You can't feel it. I'm not. Mantus have been given to the church once again. Mandates have been given to the church once again. For the kings to be born, for the ancients to arise, for the princes to arise, for the mantles to be shaken. Ali Ali yo. Ali Ali yo. Ali Ali yo. Ali Ali yo Ali Ali yo Give the Lord a big hand What happened? Let's just be quick Yes Apostle, since a full week, since last week She has had A cruising pain in her neck But as you were declaring the pain just disappeared. The pain has gone she's, forever in the name of Jesus. She's celebrating. Let's have two people so we we'll take. Our sister few. here, when she was giving birth, 
the disc was dislocated. What disc was dislocated? Um, there was a disc found on my back um, because of the epidural I went to when I had the caesarean my second child. And they said if they remove it, I'll paralyze. So I've been in that pain since 2010. A disc was dislocated yes. during childbirth. Yes. 2010. Yes. And, and they I said if they removed that disc, you'll be paralyzed. So you have to bear that pain. For years. Since 2010. That's 14 years now. What happened to you tonight? Um, I came in with a pain on my neck. My back was hurting and I keep turning. And I'm sure the people sitting behind me would have noticed. What happened now? Uh, having a prayer with you and went on stage. I walked down and I couldn't feel anything. I've been like she couldn't feel anything anymore. Give the Lord a big hand. Ma, please come up, come up. I want you to exercise that back. Come up. Bend down, touch the ground, bend, stress it. Let's see. Be sure that pain is gone forever. Dislocated back, disc removed. Touch the ground, touch the ground. Be sure. My God. You can't feel it. You can't feel it. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. 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 What happened to Mama? Mama has had a lump in her belly for eight years. You had a lump. Uh, Apostle, I have this hernia for eight years up and down in the hospital and they're saying they can't do anything and finally I got a news two weeks ago there's nothing they can do. Now as I was standing there I felt Two weeks ago they said there's nothing they could do. What, what was the issue again? It's a hernia as you can see. Oh yeah. on the tummy. It's been for eight years. For eight years. Anyway I had two lumps <laughs> one here, one here. You had two lumps? If you don't feel it, feel it. Yes I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. Now, and I had one here. You had one that here That one's too. gone. The one on the right is gone. Yes. She had two lumps. One on the right, one on the left. It's going to go now. Because it can't stay. He started it, he will perfect it. Somebody give the Lord the show. Hali, hali, yo. Hali, yo. Hali, hali, yo. Hali, yo. Hali, hali, yo. Hali, yo, hali, yo. Mama, mama has some, some rugged faith. She said, anyways, anyway. <laughs> this one here is gone. This one has to go. Give the Lord a big hand. We command the Lord to go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Are you feeling pains? Give her the microphone. Before yes, please. I came, I was feeling pain. You were feeling pains before but you came. When you stepped on the stage and started firing, the pain is not there. Pain is gone. No, gone. Lump disappeared. Amen. Check this one if it's already reducing. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands in that direction, church. Command that lump to vanish. Jesus won't take one out and leave the other. Command the lump to go. The doctor said there's nothing they can do about it. But there's something Jesus can do about it. And right now in the name of Jesus. We command that second lump to dematerialize. Give the Lord a big hand. Mama, check it. Check it. Don't help the Lord. Is it reducing? Just be sure. Don't, don't help Jesus. No, I will never. You are here tomorrow again. I'm not a liar. That's right. Yes. My goodness, I love her spirit. <laughs> Mama oh. is not a liar. But it will go in Jesus' name. It cannot stay. Amen. We monitor it from now till tomorrow okay. and we receive a perfected testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Talk to me. Two more testimonies as we shut down. A young brother was playing football. You were playing football on his shoulder. On his, I was playing football last year in November. And when I was dribbling, I, I landed. On you my were right dribbling. Shoulder. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was dribbling, I landed on my right shoulder. And ever since then, when I play football, minimal contact, my shoulder will come out. I'll have to pull it back in. Come Your shoulder was it. coming out. Yeah. And I you were pulling pull it back. It back in. And, and me, I was just living with the pain because I didn't want to. And it was this. painful. Yeah, it's painful, but you get used to the pain. So no, don't get used to pain. <laughs> it was not there when God created you. You yeah. fight it out. Yeah. You can't get used to what is not of God. Yeah. Whoever is born of God overcometh the world. Amen. Glory to God. Glory so what happened now? And then when you were saying, you know, you was naming things that will be healed and stuff, you said, um, shoulder. I put my hand on my shoulder. And even as you asked us to pray for Mark, that, that was just here. Instead of using my left shoulder, I said, I'm going to use my right hand to see. Because normally that's when I feel the pain. And when I was doing it. When I you stretch it, you feel pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this shoulder used to pull out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you will pull it in. I'll just be going like this. I'll even be playing with it. Wait, so when you pull the shoulder, it comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try it now. Let's see. It's not coming, it's not coming out again. The bone has sutured back in. <laughs> and the pain is gone. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, go back and dribble some more. Yeah. And take charge. Dominate that war in Jesus' name. Can you imagine? How can somebody pull out his shoulder and put it back with pains? What happened to my brother? A brother fell down. And he was in a car accident. Car accident. Give him the mic. And you were in a car accident. I was. I got hit and run over by a van. You were run over. Yeah. Help me. Somebody here and talk. You know, they, they, some people, the tongue is quite fluid. He was. <laughs> He was hit by a car, hit and run over by a van. You were run over by a van, run over by a van. What happened? Um, my, my, my left arm was dislocated and shattered. Left hand dislocated and shattered. Like and shattered. Yeah. My hips was broken like this, it came to the side like that. Um, and my, my whole time. When did this happen? So five years ago. Five years ago? Yes. So what was the residue from the, the, um, the, the action? Since then, they doubted that I can even grow a little bit or move about a lot. But by the grace of God, I did. But there are some problems. Sometimes when I walk um, or I'm just uh, relaxing, my knee will lock into place where I can hear the bones cracking. I can hear it moving. When I'm running or if I'm squatting, I can hear it moving. It's really painful. It is. So when you run or squat, you feel the pain? Even walking sometimes. Even can, walking? Yeah, it would, the bones will just start cracking. Come on, run. Let's be sure. Run on the stairs, run around, squat, jump, do whatever. Ali, Ali, yo! Ali, yo! Ali, yo! 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 One more, I will shut down. Our sister came with a pain on the right on the right hand side. What happened to Mama? And at the declaration of your words, he she received total healing. Total healing. The yes. pain is gone forever. Yeah, forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lift your hands toward heaven. We are just testing the waters tonight. We are just testing the waters. We are just testing the waters. Can you ask the Lord for an impartation of grace? an impartation. Let something be released upon you. Let something be released. What happened to Mama? So Mama came out here. She said um, she had some couple of injections in her knees for pains. And she felt she had not received anything. But I've been working with her. I told her to do what she could not do before. She's bending. She said she couldn't jump. And now I'm telling her to jump. Your knee was operated? About 13 years now, in North Middle Sex Hospital, and they, I have nine injections on my knee. And doctor said they didn't need replacement. So I'm always on pain. I can't sleep. They, they, need, they need to do knee replacement? Yes. According I, to the doctor? Yeah, they say if it, they do it, they change it 15 years because of my age. But I can't sleep. I can't. I so can't. you've been having pain? Yeah. And you were injected today? No, I, I, they do operation in, in hospital since 13 years, mm. and they use injection to support me. Nine injections. Last year they put three, but this year I didn't take any injection. Doctor said they need the damage, they do need replacement. But uh, what happened is that uh, I can't walk too long. I can't Were stand you feeling pain when you came here? Yes, I take painkiller. 
I always with painkiller. You are always so you live with painkiller. Yes. I can't so what we we'll do is don't take painkillers until you come tomorrow. Let's be sure. Father, I decree that this affliction is gone forever. Amen. Knees be healed in Jesus' name. Pains go forever. He sent his word to Jacob. He lightened upon Israel. He did it for one. He will do it for all. Receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So don't take painkillers. I won't take your testimony, te testimony now since you are still under the influence of painkillers. But come tomorrow. If you don't feel any pain, you sleep, wake up. Then we can say Jesus has done something. Because Jesus does things. And we don't want to arrogate what medicine is doing to him. Although medicine is indirectly a part of his operation, right? So let's be sure and then tomorrow we'll give proper praise to God. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Give the Lord a big hand. Now hear this. Tomorrow we are here for morning session to begin to build momentum for the evening. From tomorrow it will be at another level. Glory to God. It will be at another level from tomorrow. But for every one of you who has come under this atmosphere, your life will never be the same again. Everything you heard tonight, you will manifest. I say you will manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. And so the Lord keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, lift up his countenance over you, and give you peace. Before you return tomorrow, you have an encounter and a life-changing encounter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. It is established in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be purged. When you come back, you can become a prophet.